Good morning. John and Jim Mindana. Apology for my poor Korean. Um, it's a great privilege to present to you uh, a very important message for me and for marketplace people. I think uh, we have to balance gospel and governance go uh, mandate at the same time. So um, today I want to share with you, can I put up, can you, uh, I don't know where the slides is. Would you put up the PowerPoint? Oh, right. Here we are. Um, we have to balance uh, these two. However, it's quite difficult for us uh, in marketplace people. Um, but by the grace of God, we can achieve it. Um, next, please. Um, two years ago, I was awarded by Taiwan government a national innovation, uh, industrial innovation award. At a world ceremony, I met a lady uh, I, I think uh, brothers and sisters from Taiwan all are acquainted with this lady. Uh, he, she is the general manager of a uh, Aroma group. Um, very important, we smile at each other because we are both CBMC members. <laughs> yes. She was awarded for her excellent female leadership. And I was awarded because I have done something to bridge academy and uh, industry. Both of us try to fulfill the calling of the Lord in our marketplace. So, next please. Uh, we are in an era of continuous disruption. Um, we use a framework in business world to analyze our environment, which calls a steeple paradigm. We analyze social changes, um, technological changes, uh, economic changes, environmental changes, political changes, legal changes, and ethical changes. For us, I think in 2017, a new world order had been established since uh, Trump administration launched a lot of uh, tariffs and uh, international trade barriers toward a Chinese regime. Since then, we can see a lot of conflicts between those two G2. But gradually, I think um, previous presentation just showed up the Ukrainian uh, war. Since last February, we witnessed another dramatic changes in our world. Food supply had been severely damaged. And during COVID pandemic, we see a lot of disruption in our supply chains, which badly impact our business world, brothers and sisters. We have to deal with skyrocketing uh, transportation and the shipment costs. Meanwhile, because of this, we witnessed 
probably the most severe inflation in recent years. That's the reason why Federal Reserve raised the interest rate to a very high level. Fortunately, probably we can see a soft landing in the near future, but still, the world order had been changed into a never witnessed before. But the most damage, most severe damage to our world is our, next please, is moral disruption and our spiritual disruption. Because of the value changes from generation to generation, we can see the market have been changed drastically. Probably we see 10 years as a decade before, but now probably the duration is only for three years, maybe one and a half, because we abide by the more law, which is a been followed by semiconductor industry and uh, impact our daily life in all areas. Next slide, please. Um, I want to borrow IBM's framework. It, they use uh, ISAS infrastructure as a service and uh, platform as a service and uh, software and as a service. Like previous presentation just show that major challenges ahead have been launched by the United Nations in 2015 as sustainable development goals. There are 17 of them. Each one is very difficult to accomplish. However, the 17th goal is partnership, which is considered by me as the most difficult one to be achieved. But here we are. We are CBMC. We are one in Christ, right? So together with each other, we can achieve all those sustainable development goals. But for the rest of 16 goals, who can deal with them? I don't believe in government. Governments cannot do that. We have to depend on more innovation and creativity empowered by the Lord so that we need more entrepreneurship to break out all those constraints. Next, please. That's the reason why I put up bus this business as a mission and a sustainability as a service. Sustainability is a goal but only achieved in the arena of the Lord's because Yahweh is He who He is. He never changes. His will will be done on earth as in it, it is in heaven. But through Godly people like you and me. Next, please. Would you read with me Roman 8, 8, 8 19? Please. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. The creation waits in eager. In some English translation, there's a word here, much stronger than eager. 
wait in agony. All creation is waiting for the revelation of sons of God, daughters of God. They are waiting for you and me. Are we ready? If God's people cannot reveal ourselves, we cannot fulfill His calling in our marketplace, then the world will still be agonizing every day for all those sustainable goals. We cannot preach gospel in many unreached areas, but you can. You business people can get in every market, carry the mission, not only doing business, but doing God's business. Next, please. That's the reason why we need to balance the gospel mandate with governance mandate. In Matthew 28, the great commandments we are all familiar with. We have to go and make disciples. But don't forget, in Genesis chapter 1, right at the very beginning, God creates us in His image. The purpose of the creation is to, to govern the world. The reason why the world has been so chaotic is we fail the mandate. We fail the mandate of governance, so we have to reform the governance mandate. So we have to balance gospel with governance so that we can fulfill the purpose of God in our life. Next, please. In this matrix, I'm going to show you how to balance and develop a well-being in every area of, of life. First, next please. Um, with the left column, we can see the tangible or the soft power, uh, untangible, intangible, and soft power. And the right column, we can see the hot power and the tangible ones. In the lower, uh, lower row, which is necessary for everybody, and uh, for the upper row, we can see the conditions that is sufficient to everybody. First of all, I want to bring you to Ephesians 3.16. I think in this era, everybody has great pleasure especially if you are business owners. You have to take risk. You have to carry the burden for daily operations. And the life cycle has been changed to shorten, shorter. And then we have to meet daily challenges with unexpected speed, pace. If we are not strengthened from within, Paul urged, per, Paul pray for Ephesian churches that they are spirit, they are strengthened, they are strengthened with God's spirit in their inner beings. So they, they, they can fight against all those our world pressure. We need this power to fight against 
we become the winner. We become a warrior to fight this. That's our mandate. Next, please. And for financial, because we, I use a similar shape like S, so I use uh, a dollar sign there. Financial well-being has been critical for younger generations because the competi competition game rule have been changed. So younger, genera younger generations are very difficult. In China this year, we can see college graduates probably will encounter the most difficult year to find jobs. I think that's not on the only country suffers. Many, many countries. In Taiwan, we are probably better, but not good enough still. In many, many developing countries, we witness the development path, the stages, but still lagger behind. How to create jobs that depends on entrepreneurial activities. And also, I think this is the, the privilege for churches to help younger generations. In this regard, and then we'll bring back to their faith. Next, please. The third one is a social well-being. In pandemic three years, we witness a lot of suffering because we are locked down. We cannot go to our daily life in our office. We cannot pay visit to our customers as usual. But now, probably we can recover, it, but the game rule again is changed. A lot of people will not like go back to the office as three years before. They want to stay. They want to stay home and work from home, so we can see the commercial property in New York City drops like 50 percent. How can we deal with that? with the commodity price, that's one issue. Another issue is when we are accustomed to the way we live in last three years, how can we go back to the normal? Or we can have better social well-being by not being locked down, either psychologically or socially. So nowadays in marketplace, a lot of urgency demands the employee, employer to give better working conditions for their employees. I will raise an example in the Bible. In Daniel, we see a magnificent figure who served four emperors. And when Darius was in power, he was raised to the most high, just next to, just like Joseph, next to Pharaoh. And Daniel is just next to uh, Darius. And then a lot of conflict between his colleagues who want to set him up, put him in lion's dens. Before he was put in lion's dens, we can see Daniel still 
opened up his windows and faced the east to worship his Lord three times a day. How brave is Daniel? In 1 Corinthians 7.26, there's a beautiful word. Remain as it is. Remain as it is. Because we are stable. We are secured. We are in peace with the Lord. And then we can conquer all kinds of social difficulties within our marketplace environment. I have to go back to the financial one. Uh, in uh, Exodus 36.5, Moses, ex, uh, at that time, Moses built up tabernacle. And uh, he brought up a lot of craftsmen and ex-leader called Bezalel. He's also a magnificent magnificent figure. With, 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 with craftsmen, but without the material, the tabernacle cannot be built. So they asked Israeli people to put up, what, to give, give, to give, give whatever they brought out from Egypt. I think Israeli people, when, when they left e Egypt, they don't know what's ahead. They don't know they will spend 40 years in wilderness. But they prepare themselves so they have gold, all kinds of materials to, to build the tabernacle. The original idea was to prepare those materials for themselves. But actually, they didn't spend any physical material in the wilderness they prepared for themselves. Because for 40 years, what they eat is from the heaven. They eat manna every day. The shoes on their feet had never been worn off. If you, you are a shoemaker, you have to ask Israel people which brand they wear. But Exodus, in Exodus 36, 5, we see a beautiful picture. Everybody put in. Put in a treasure house, put in the offering back until more than enough, more than enough. I think Israel people are pretty insecure, feel themselves as a, a, a people wandering around, but their security is based on God and then they are secured. So they just give away. They just give away. Not only they, they earn, like John Wesley said, earn as much as you can, and then save as much as you can, and then give as much as you can. That's, a, that's the rule of the God. Okay, let's come to the final one. Next, please. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus promised that we'll have life and have it abundantly. What a promise. What a promise. But for most churches, we started with uh, spiritual well-being. If you are a business owner, 
Do you start with spiritual well beings? I don't think so, especially in those forbidden areas. You have to start with the soul well being with the money, financial one. And then you are engaged with those lives so that they can be escalated. Escalated to a, a higher level. That's the promise of Jesus. We have life and they have life more abundantly in every area of our life. In our mental wellness, in our social wellness, in our financial wellness, what wellness, and then we can think about eternity. For those unbelievers, for those unbelievers, they cannot imagine eternity. What does it mean? We have to take care of them in every aspect of, the, of their lives. And then they will experience what we are talking about. We try to preach gospels. We try to make disciples. However, the key issue is probably if I cannot survive today, how can I have an eternity? Because most people still live on the earth. They think only those tangible things. When we get the tangible things down, I do believe that the untangible, intangible ones will be accomplished simultaneously. May I come back to, go, may I go back to the, pre, uh, the, the, the first slide when I met Jane Huang at the award ceremony. I see a lady, CBMC lady, who had been a worshiper, who had been a warrior, and uh, that make her a winner of a national innovation Industrial Innovation Award. She was awarded because she takes care of his, uh, oh, take care, takes care of her employees. Nowadays, we have a strong urgency from the so society that we have to take care the diversity, equity, and inclusiveness. But to my understanding, Christian has the best tool, has the best methodology for inclusiveness. Because we have gospel and we have governance. If we mingle these two, if we intertwine these two, like a biological DNA, we have two strands which spiraled together and then we can see the secret of life. We have Jesus Christ's cross and then his life had been ordained to save us and we ordain our life to him as a compensation. Actually, it's not a compensation. It's just an appreciation. We appreciate what Jesus had been finished. And then we live our daily life to make our life shine in the darkness like his. Final slides, next please. 
Would you read the verse with me again? In 1 Peter 2, 9. Please. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And next, please. Here, I would like to highlight the royal priesthood. In Greek, these two words represent two roles. First of all, royal means kinship, right? Royal means kinship. And the other one is priesthood, right? Priesthood, we are more familiar with that idea. But we are not only pray for other people like a priest. We, what we do is not only to bring people to the Lord and make peace between We have priesthood, but we also have kinship. So let's recover the royal priesthood. I will invite you to stand on your feet. I would like to invite you to stretch your hands, to stretch your hands. Use your right hand to grasp the kinship and use your left hand to grasp the priesthood. Look at me, look at me. I'm show you now. Try to do your best to turn yourself as where you see, stand. Okay? But I, I know some of you are very difficult because the, the aisle is narrow. But try to turn. Turn seven times, like the biological, like the biological DNA. You grasp kinship and also priesthood. You are like a tornado. You are like a tornado. You absorb energy. You accumulate those power from Holy Spirit, and then you ascend. Seven times? Okay. Stretch your right hand up and grasp governance. And stretch your left hand, grasp gospel and then turn yourself seven, seven times make use world praise to the Lord pray to the Lord ex the ordain ex the anointing so that you can conquer you can Achieve the goal that God has given you. <laughs> Lastly, stretch your hands again. <laughs> Use your right hand to grasp ministry. And use your left hand to grasp marketplace. Turn yourself seven times and then ask God to empower you.
Give our Lord a big hand. Hallelujah.